we should be our ultimate goal. So this chanting definitely cleanses the heart and also gives you another holy one of unending spiritual happiness. Sometimes people feel, if I go to spiritual life, I'll become miserable. Why? I won't be able to drink, I won't be able to do this, I won't be able to do that. Because what's the use of living? They don't understand. It is a higher level of happiness. Just like Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, there are three stages of happiness. Happiness in goodness, happiness in passion, happiness in ignorance, happiness in goodness is bitter in the beginning, sweet in the end, and it makes you up to self-realization. Just like when you first come to spiritual life, they get exposed to the guidelines. It's a little bitter in the beginning. But then as you practice it, the bitterness becomes sweet. When you have surgery, in the beginning, it's painful. Yeah. There's no such thing as pain that surgery. But then as you recover from the disease, that pain becomes a source of pleasure. And then it happens in passion. Feet in the beginning, bitter in the end, which is derived of contact of the senses of the sun subject. By and large, society is engrossed in passion and ignorance. In the fifth canto, you read the instructions of Lord Rishabh Dev to his hundred sons. The word Rishabh in Sanskrit means the best. He was an incarnation of God. His father was King Navi, mother was Mimu Devi. They were once performing in Yajna with the intention of having a son like God. The Lord was so pleased, he said, You can't have a son like me, I'll become your son. So Lord Rishabh Dev says in his famous words, I am there, there, Father Miloke. Do you not lead this life like the animals? Now what do you do with the human life? What does Rishabh Dev say? What do you do if you use it for? Yes. That poor Divya Putsaka. Yes, that poor. Perform my charities for the pleasure of the Lord. Then you may ask, what am I going to get in exchange for all this austerity? You get anything in exchange? What do you get in From his soul came another. Unending spiritual happiness. Unending. Properly to explain that there is a limit to the height on the waves of the river ocean. But there is no limit to the height of the spiritual ocean. There should be no doubt that we perform austerities for the pleasure of the Lord. In exchange, there will be real happiness. So why do the doubts come in our mind? Do doubts come in your mind sometimes? If they don't come, then you're a pure devotee. So why do doubts come in our mind? Because we listen to our fickle mind. When the mind becomes your guru, that's when the doubts come. When the mind is your guru, you do everything that the mind says. And you start believing the mind more than the Lord and the different ears. And then the doubts increase. So the doubts should be corrected. Arjuna had so many doubts, he went to the right source. Krishna says, for the doubting soul, there's no happiness now or later. So instead of listening to the fickle mind, we should listen to the purified mind. What are the austerities of the mind? What are the austerities of the tongue? What is the austerity of the body? Krishna discusses this in the Bhagavad Gita. What is the austerity of the body? We use the different senses in a positive way. We have these knowledge going senses. Tame them, use them correctly. In the Bhagavatam, you get an example of different animals on the meter end. Take, for example, the moth. The moth is very attracted to light. And so, when the night, when the light comes on, the moth is in bliss. Let me go and kiss the light. And go with the other light. 
Thank his you. boat by the heat of the light. You may have seen this in my book in the morning, so many months. So the more the shine is satisfied, it dies. And he gets shafted with it. Then he has a bee that likes to attract. It be, like to smell something. And it goes and sits on the lotus soil. But enjoying the fragrance of lotus so much that it wants you to go into samadhi. But then in the evening, the lotus flower closes. And then when the lotus flower closes, what happens to the bee? What happens? It gets trapped to death. And then it is as why it smells. It's trapped. Then you have the tear. It's very attracted to a particular melody. The deer has very big ears. We have a temple in Washington and you see deers everywhere. Sometimes they show up in, in our backyard also. Many deers live in the jungle. And some of them, they come on the road. So when the hunter wants to capture a deer, what does it do? What does it do? They have particular melody. The deer stops to run. Usually it runs very fast. Here's the melody. And try to trace where the melody is. And what happens? The hunter shoots the deer. Then trying to satisfy its ear, it gets trapped. Then he has a fish. What the fish is trying to do? Eating. What is the cunning fisherman do? Put the food on the bait. And the bee goes to it. The fish goes to eat it. He gets trapped with that. And then, what example is that? Elephant. And then the elephant gets trapped. Not easy to trap an elephant. The she elephant is specially trained. And they dig a ditch covered by grass. And the she elephant teases the he elephant who walk and then fall in the ditch. So these examples that we gave are all from the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the Bhagavatam gives these examples to show how these animals by becoming slaves of their one of their senses gets captured to death. And the problem with the human animals, all the senses are competing. I want to tell from my eyes, see something obscene. Hear something mundane, eat without discrimination, and there's something angry. No, that is not a general. So therefore it is said, the austerity of the body is to use it in the service of the Lord. Practice cleanliness. Practice non-violence. The devotee believes in true non-violence. These days, Buddhism has become quite fashionable. Not sure Many either. parts of the world find it as fashionable. People want to be Buddhists. But they don't understand Buddha's teaching. Buddha preached non-violence. When he saw the violence in society, Buddha was greatly pained. But the modern Buddhists, they eat everything. Where the devotee is truly non-violent. The modern Buddhists not only eat everything, drink everything also. I go to Burma, which is a Buddhist country. And in every corner there's a Buddhist temple. You see, you see Four-year-old monks walking on the road and going to hotels and begging. You walk on the streets, you see so many Buddhist monks. And it's like a tradition to have shave up your child, completely shaven up like Hare Krishna. Only thing they don't have is a seeker. And they almost wear a dress which is close to saffron. Even in buses, they have seats reserved for monks. But unfortunately, they eat everything. Right up to the temple in the Buddhist temple in one of the cities. When they have they were feast, they cook meat and all that. It comes right into our temple. So Buddha preached non-violence. He renounced his whole kingdom. But the present day Buddhists, as I said, don't fear anything. Whereas the devotee is totally non-violent. The classic example you read in the fifth canto, of Jat Bharat, when in previous life was King Bharat. How did Jat Bharat was so cautious? He was carrying the palanquin of King Rahumana, but unlike the other palanquin carriers, he was very cautious in placing his feet. 
The belly is kicking, what you carry it is one chest and with a king, you know. Why are you moving so slowly now? I want you to move fast. He was going to hear a spiritual discourse. But, but because he was a king, he had a lot of passion. The king of the world was very enlightened. So Jat Bharat was so cautious that he would not place his feet on the ground to be so at least for the next three feet. There were no entities on the roof, on the floor. So the king chastised Jat Bharat. Don't you know who you're carrying? In the waiting days, the monarchy would be carried in a palanquin and the rest would walk. The king would be carried in a palanquin. In this week, that boy didn't say anything. Then when he spoke, the king realized that this man is not deaf and down, but he's a great sage. He cut down to his palanquin. That is the feet of that boy. I apologize for having chastised. He said, I'm not scared of Indra's thunderbolt, but I'm scared of offending a Vaishnava. So on a devotional path, we had to be careful about Vaishnava Aparat. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains, Ramanda Brahmida Kulam Bhagavanaji, Guru Krishna Kripa Bhai Bhakti Latabhi, are going to many births and deaths. We need a fortunate soul who receives the seed of Bhakti. Seed of Bhakti, what does that mean? Knowledge that the Lord is supreme. And the way to please the Lord is to chant His holy name. Just like in the words we did this morning, Lord Nanak was saying, satisfy the Lord. So that should be our goal. You know? Satisfy the Lord. And he satisfied. Chitin Mahmoud is saying, have you seen this Bhakti that I be? Knowledge that what to serve is the solution. You water the seed by chanting and hearing. Tapu. Go out of the cloud. You hear by chanting and hearing. It's our experience. As we chant, we progress spiritually. But then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, build a strong fencing, but keep yourself. And devotee association. Just like I see many other buildings in this area have very high boundary walls. And we have a boundary wall. Why do we have a boundary wall? <laughs> we don't want unwanted elements to come in. So in some parts of the world, there are boundary walls, and above the boundary walls, there are electric wires. If anybody touches anything, we get a shock. That you know, they have a lot of wealth. They have to take all these precautions. But then Lord Chaitanya says, there may be unwanted weeds that also grow. Chanting sometimes makes you proud. I'm initiated, I'm Brahmin, I'm this, I'm that. What, is it? what should we do with the unwanted weeds? What do we do? Them grow? What do you do? Approve them. It's like we have a dangerous scar appearing in your body or an infectious infection entering your body. So what do you do? Get the infection removed right away. Is that what it means to be pulled out? But then Lord Chaitanya proceeded to explain how a beautiful garden can get spoiled if a man elephant is allowed to come in. And then the repertory the Man, elephant, of dance. Christ of our brother. So we should be very careful on the devotional path to avoid Christ of our brothers. Just criticize Christ of our We should avoid that. We should avoid Christ of our brother. That can be done by being cautious and careful. Prabhupada encouraged us to look at the good in everyone. He created this very wonderful Islam society. And he gave us all the opportunity to serve. When Papa was young, an astrologer did his horoscope. The astrologer said, This man will one day make a house in which the whole world will be able to live. Papa built a house in which the whole world can live. 
which means that people of all backgrounds can live, all backgrounds, all nationalities. You don't have to be rich or poor. The Prabhupada wanted us to work in unity. The Prabhupada said, Prabhupada is often called this, United we stand, divided we fall. Have you heard that before? Yeah? United we stand, divided we fall. What does it mean? What does it mean? If you work together, you can be, become very strong. And if you divide it, you keep fighting in with each other. Prabhupada gave an example of a blade of grass. A blade of grass by itself has almost no strength. You pull it, when a child can break it. But if the blade of grass is blended with other blades of grass, then it becomes stronger than a rope. So Prabhupada wanted us to look at the good in everyone. And then we encourage cooperation. Prabhupada wanted us in the Vaishnava community to look at the good in everyone that will enable us to be respectful to everyone. But unfortunately, our taste is what the weakness is. You didn't hear that scandal about that person. The more positive approach is look at the good in everyone and encourage everyone. And avoid all funny. Avoid to Jalpa. And replace for Jalpa with Krishna Katha. In the 10th canto, part 1, Krishna Katha spoke as follows. He said, Since I have been hearing the nectar of Lord's pastime from Shukadeva Swami, my hunger and fast is no longer an impediment to me. Prakshan Maharaj, as you know, was going to die in seven days. So he prepared for his departure in a very glorious way. He invited all the great sages and said, What should a person do who is about to die? So, different sages give different replies. But he is said to the advice, when my sugar that was found. So he was getting so much nectar, hearing the passion of the Lord, that his hunger and thirst that would have normally bothered a good person did not bother him at all. Prabhupada in the purport of this verse says, we are all suffering from spiritual hunger. The material hunger is spiritual hunger. Material hunger, you want to eat prasad. So the world is suffering with the lack of God consciousness. Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, there is a shortage of anything. It just is one commodity, love of God. So Chaitanya Hamhapa guides us on the devotional path. Be careful to avoid Vaishnava Prabhupada. And he gave an example. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described as the most merciful of all incarnation. He liberated people of all walks of life. He avoided thousands of impersonal, the path of personal. He avoided thousands of Buddhists, the path of Vaishnava. Once Lord Chaitanya had defeated the Buddhist leader in a discussion. So the Buddhists wanted to take revenge. They defeated our leader, our guru. So they took some contaminated food in a certain place. A and they were like a Buddhist lord. He had some Mahaprasad for you. And then they were offering the plate. An eagle came from the top, took the contaminated food, and dropped the plate on the head of the Guru. And the poor Guru, you know, had a metal plate full of the head. He fainted, fainted. And the brothers were feeling very apologetic. Oh, because of our bad intentions, now our Guru has got punished. So they revealed their intentions to Go and whisper the holy name in your Guru's ear. And? So they did that. And the guru came to consciousness and then they all 
Sri Vaishnava. So the Lord came to Varanasi in the movie he said, There is too much criticism going on for you. We can't tolerate it. Tapan Masan Chandra Shekhar, two devotees, they belong to Shadow Kala, they will get the wounds of the Lord. Please come and debate, be these impersonals. The Lord is always obliged to his devotees. So the Lord went to the assembly, the Mahavadi Sanyasis were on a higher platform, and the Lord went and sat down. And they wash their feet before going into the temple. God, when he appears, he performs superhuman activities. These you have so many incarnations. And I ask them to do something superhuman. And they'll feel the test. Once there was a so-called Swami who told me, why do you people believe that only Krishna is supreme? Why we can't all be Krishnas? I said, and Krishna came. He performed superhuman activities, which no one can equal or has equal so far. Just because they have been done today, doesn't mean they can't do it tomorrow. But when the real God comes, he performs superhuman activities. Just like Lord Chaitanya, on several occasions, he revealed superhuman activities. When the Lord was a young boy, not in Himalai, there was a Brahman who came to stay in their house. Like that means, uh, I'm going about the devil. So whenever the Brahmin would cook his food to no bread, the mind would come and eat it and contaminate it. It's happened three times. Jagannath is just there. Don't worry, I am going to hide my son at a distance. Please cook again. It was almost midnight. He was offering a prashad. The Maya game came there. And, the, and he said, Brahman said, Oh, you've come again. Your father showed me you would not be coming. And the Maya said, Who are you offering this to? Me. And he said, Vishnu, Vishnu, Vishnu. Vishnu. He's gone. And then the Maya showed his charms in the form. So when God comes, he does something superhuman. We don't accept these so-called modern-day Kaliva gods. There are plenty of mystics in our know, country also. There are plenty of so-called Bhagavan in India. We are Bhagavan. Might have time to have a So then when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat down where they wash their feet before going into the temple. See how humble he was. The leader of the Mayavadi, Prakashananda Saraswati, came and took his hand and took him up on the stage. Before he went on the stage, he revealed the brilliance of millions of moons put together. These sannyasis can see. This sannyasi is an ordinary. So much of brilliance coming from his face. And then in the dialogue, or Chaitanya convinced convince that the holy name is the medium. And all the one of these became Vaishnava. And then they went in a big hurry now. I usually go for a walk, and today we were walking in, what is it, here called? Right next to a very ancient beer factory. <laughs> but the good thing was, we had so many worries, you know, wishing Hare Krishna to everyone. It's amazing, almost everyone responded, Hare Rama. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a truck overtaking us, and we were walking in it. People in the truck chanted, oh, mom, I'm sorry. <laughs> they saw us in the chant. If we go to East Africa, I haven't been to West Africa, but in East Africa, everyone who sees you says, Hare Krishna. The Lord said that in a proper line, the chanting of the Holy Name and predicted that the chanting of the Holy Name would go every town in the village of the world. Lord Chaitanya had a devotee called Kola Vijayasrila. Kola Vijayasrila was materially very poor, not rich like all of you. <laughs> he had one room to live with no roof. 
<laughs> he had one dog each, which is never old. And he had only one pot in his house. And that pot was so broken that Chaitanya Bhagavad said, if the thief would not have touched it, it would be so bad if a thief wouldn't even see that. And what business was Kolavati Shila doing? Banana leaf cups. And he would sell bananas. So Chaitanya would go every day to his shop. Smoke a soy banana to go to his shop. What's the price of banana today? And he would go for the price. <coughs> 10 rubles per. Uh, Ten kopecks per dozen, whatever the price was, and all No, no, it's too expensive. You are making too much profit. One day, I will show to the world how much profit you are making. And Kolavaji Shida would say, come and see my house. You see yourself how much money I have. And from a small, tiny income, he would give how much money for worshiping the Ganji. So, Lord Chaitanya, once led a marathon hurry now to the Chan Kadi's house. He just killed them non stop for eight, nine hours, non stop. But then he felt thirsty. He was very thirsty. He needed to drink water. He went to Kolavaja Sridhar's house, took that broken pot of which Kolavaja Sridhar would drink water, drink dal, eat chapati. So the Lord took that pot, put water inside, and started drinking it. My dear Lord, what are you doing? You're drinking from a contaminated play cup. The Lord said, I'm getting purified. The Lord recognized his great devotion. He showed to the world what a great devotee Kolavaja Shila is. The Lord is drinking water from his contaminant, from his pot. So Kolavati Srila was once offered any benediction the Lord made, any benediction. Kolavati Srila would very loudly chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, day and night. And he would say, this man is mostly haunted, doesn't eat anything, he doesn't sleep and he doesn't let us sleep. Once Lord Chaitanya sent his devotee to bring Kodavaja Srila, Lord said, finding him will be very easy. You go and stand on the road, you hear loud chanting from one direction. If you want to give me a benediction, give me the benediction. <laughs> and every bird, you will come to my shop and bargain with me. Say so there's a very simple life. Get attached to the holy name. So I endeavor there should be to get attached to the holy name. The holy name is not Indian or Western or American or Russian. The holy name is coming from the spiritual world. And the holy name is not different from the Lord. So we are here in Krishna consciousness to make spiritual advancement. That may be brahmacharis, that may be griyasas, some may be one of brothers, and some may be sannyas. But our goal is common, to get attached to the holy name, to take advantage of the prosper. There's no secret in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes the you know, Guru will give you secret mantras. We have no secret mantras. We have no secret at all in this world. Anything happens on the Islam, great point is going to every corner of the world. We have a busy meeting, and I will all go on what we discuss. So this chanting the holy name is not secretive. Chant the holy name. Say in the body of us. Don't let the mind be a guru. And then you'll succeed spiritually. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Ramakashaki, can I ask two questions? Okay, ask quickly. Is Krishna always present in his holy name? Or if he chant offensively, Krishna is not present there? He's always present. Okay. Could you mention the uh, elements of proper chanting? Proper oh, chanting? <clears throat> I mean, when you're chanting a 16 now, try to concentrate in hearing and chanting. Just like when you're eating Prashad, 
कलर वीन लाइफ और सेगमेंट डिस्ट्रैक्टेड वीनिंग उच्च आर तो उनके हम डिस्टर्ब नहीं होंगे मैंने यू लाइक इट तो मैंने चैनल में होगी नेम ट्राई टू चैनल में और डिस्टर्ब हो ओके Sometimes when we do some service, we see how some unwanted tweets are kind of growing. And over, for example, we do some certain service, we become proud. And so then we think that maybe we should give up this service. So how to properly uh, act when we uh, get that some unwanted tweets are developed because of our service? Take the help of advance by someone to help you to overcome the cause of the unwanted bees. You remember Sami said, give me your mind, those are more advanced. Don't hesitate. No doubt, give me your mind. Sometimes our mind becomes our world. So, could you explain what is the role of the guru, the role of the guru in disciple's life? And how the disciple can enhance his uh, relationship with the uh, guru. Okay, okay. The guru is essentially a transcendental force man. Is that a magician or a superhuman being? Some other people have a really utopian concept of a guru. Or he should be like a movie star, a sweet, sweetest singer of the world. The guru basically. <clears throat> it just gives you the pure message, but he preaches by example. <clears throat> There was once a mother whose son had very, very high diabetes. So the mother would tell the son, "Stop eating sweets, <clears throat> you're going to die." But the son would not stop eating sweets. So she finally took the son to the guru. Guruji, can you please tell my son to stop eating sweets? He has very high diabetes. The guru said, "Come back in two weeks. I'll tell him." So in two weeks, the mother took the son again to the guru, and the guru told the son, "Son, don't eat sweets. It's bad for your health. You'll die." And the son said, "Okay, Guruji, I won't eat sweets anymore. I promise." So the mother was shocked. She said, "I'm saying day and night, and he doesn't listen." So she asked the guru. Why did he do? 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 So basically, what the guru does, they give you the instructions and the mess path and teaches by example. No one is stopped at this point. What is the disciple's duty to accept these instructions with faith and reverence? And by following the instructions, one gets attached to the guru, just like how you get attached to the holy name by chanting, how you get attached to reading by reading. So you get attached by following the instructions. Is that your question? Okay. The method for the Kali Yuga is chanting the holy name of Krishna, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, 
What will be the result of changing some other mantras, some other holy name? What will be the result of changing the mantra Om Namah Shivaya? You get some benefit, not full benefit. You won't go back to God. You can decide how many more birds you want in the field. Do you want to go with the express train or the good train? Choice is out. You can take the super fast train or the slow train. Or the fast train. Yes. You get some benefit, not full benefit. You won't go back to God. You can decide how many more birds you want in the field. The express train or the good train. Choice is out. You can take the super fast train or the slow train. Please tell us what force pushes you to preach so so much to after even after 40 years that uh, travel in such a heavy schedule. We know that you had few surgeries on your heart and still you continue to preach so forcefully. What what is the source of this stress? Krishna brings it in my hand, absolutely. Any surgery. So I know who told you that. But also, there's some other health problems, which everybody has, health and travel. Anyway, the answer is simple. Papa preached the end of his life. He didn't worry so much about his health. We have a mission ahead of us. And we can try our best to do that. I don't want to stop at this point. Thank you very much. Like, tomorrow we had to always draw stuff. We put a voice on our farm for one hour. And uh, thank you. Asiva. Please stand up on your name. So this morning, I'm evening some devotees at Tampa Darshan. I'll give darshan to everyone.